All right, Jeremy Locke. I'm a U.S. Special Forces Green Beret. You should re recognize me for some of the other videos that we've been doing, working with Aerial Recovery Group. I'm out here in the Caribbean, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to apply a quick and hasty field tourniquet, as most of you probably aren't walking around with tourniquets. But last video we went over how to go over the MARCH acronym and assess a casualty when they're down. Now, as you're going through the MARCH acronym and you notice that they are having some bleeding issues, one of the quickest and effective way to save someone's life is to just tourniquet. I know it sounds crazy, but anytime you have arterial bleeding, which is gonna be characterized by bright red bleeding, so the blood's actually gonna be super red, and it may spurt because it's coming directly, it's in your artery, it's coming from being pumped directly from your heart. So this is more pressurized, this has a lot of oxygen in it, which is why it's more red. That's why when you get blood drawn and you may have some blood come out, it's super dark, or you look inside the vials, it's real dark. That's venous blood that's already been deoxygenated. It's gone through your system and all the oxygen has been pulled out of it already. It's going back, getting ready to go back through to get cycled and reoxygenated. So you're looking for that bright red bleeding because that's they're going to start losing blood quick. So I come up on someone, I go through, I'm checking for massive bleeding, which is the M in March, and I notice massive bleeding immediately. And we'll say this victim has it on her left lower forearm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm immediately come up here, I see it, I'm gonna put immediate pressure on it as soon as I can, with, just with my hand if I have to. I'm gonna locate her joint. I know it's bleeding bad and I need to tourniquet her. So I would rip anything I have off, I'll take my belt out if I have it, but a more effective way is to grab a piece of cloth or something. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna spin it up tight. I will apply it two inches above the joint that's directly above the injury. If I can't, if the injury is up on the upper arm, I will just put it as high up into the armpit as I can below the injury. So I find her joint here, two inches up. I'll go ahead and take this. I'm gonna go around once, <clears throat> around here, and I'm gonna tie a knot. And I'll tie this and cinch it down real tight, okay? Now from here, I will look around and find something that I can torque this tourniquet with. So in this case, I found a stick here. So I'm gonna take this stick and I'm gonna place it directly on top of the knot. And then I will take the two loose ends and I will tie another knot on top of it. So essentially you tied a double knot with a stick in between the two knots. From this point, I won't torque it too hard because it's gonna really tighten down, but I will start twisting this. Can you feel that pinching? So this is gonna really tighten it down. Once you get it tightened to a point where it's cutting off the bleeding, you're gonna be watching for the blood coming out. That spurting stopped, the bright red bleeding has stopped. I know it's tight enough. From here, I will wrap my tails around a couple times, and then I will secure it in position, usually up underneath, and I'll secure this in position here. And then what I wanna do is I wanna annotate what time I put this tourniquet on. A tourniquet can stay on a limb for 24 hours and it'll still be okay. So in all, when in doubt, tourniquet. That's the best thing you can do, stop the bleeding. On the battlefield, it's the number one cause of death. And in a natural disaster, when earthquakes, anything like that, any of that bleeding, it's gonna, it will cause a lot of death. So a simple tourniquet using materials you find around you can be very, very helpful. Thank you for watching. Please send some comments. Hit that subscribe button and like if you like the video.